Hello there, good morning and welcome to my little arty corner of YouTube. My name's Angela and I like to encourage people to draw and to share with you my thinking process, what goes through my mind as I'm drawing patterns or exploring patterns or doing things to give you some structure to help you have a go and then encouragement to help you to develop your own style, your own way of doing things, to experiment, to explore. It, we all start some way, it's nice to have that guidance, but then it's also nice to have that encouragement too. Well, why don't you try this? Or, oh, I'd never thought of that, let me see what happens. And then make it your own, in your own way. And have your own way of drawing, even if it's similar to mine, it will be your own way because you will draw in the way your muscles work. You will draw in the way that aesthetics please you. And there's nothing more wonderful than seeing people create things that say, this is who I am. This is how I want to express myself, whatever form of art that may be. I may not always like everybody's type of art, but I can appreciate the, um, the passion, the enthusiasm, the personal skill and voice that goes into them. And that's all that matters, really, at the end of the day. And you can pick up when somebody's really had fun or has really enjoyed what they're doing. And, and that is, that's all that I think I could ever ask of anybody, is just to enjoy what you do. And um, not worry about what other people think. Because there will always be people who love your work and there will always be people who go, yeah, it's OK. Yeah, I can see that it's lovely, but it's not my kind of thing. And that's OK. You know, that's life. That's called being human. Anyway, um, I witter on already. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel. Um, I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost you a penny. Just a tiny, tiny amount of energy to click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release videos, it's usually, well, if you want to know, click the bell, but it is usually every day except for Sundays and Thursdays. Although there may not be quite so many videos in the next three weeks or so because I've got to get a book finished and um, I'm a tad behind. Well, I'm not behind, but I, I'm aware that I'm getting closer and closer to the deadline. So if I'm not careful, panic is going to set in. So, oh, and thank you for all the lovely comments as well. It's really lovely. And for those who've been showing me their drawings through Instagram or messages and things, I just love what you're doing. Thank you so much for showing me. And um, it means a lot when I can see things and I get this feedback that you enjoy what I'm saying and how I'm saying things and the encouragement I'm trying to give. See, I work in my own style, my own way of art. I'm still experimenting and exploring things because, well, it's a lifelong process, isn't it? So, thank you. All right, OK, on, on with this. This I was drawing on Saturday with you and I did a very small amount here. And sat, then I went off and I did this and then I checked um, social media, you know, stuff. And discovered some, I can't remember, I'm so sorry I should write names down and I haven't. But I discovered that somebody still, could you take us on the journey of drawing this? I'd love to see it. And I thought, oh, right, okay. But don't worry. Because even though I've drawn these, this area here, perhaps with some things in there that look new and different, I will pick some of these patterns out. In fact, that's what I'm going to do today. And then we can look at them, particularly this one. I like this one. I do like that one. I shall come back to that in a moment, though. So, yeah, so embrace beautiful chaos. I think that's a lovely quote to have in a sketchbook or art journal or notebook or anywhere else, because things can get pretty chaotic here. Talking of chaos, just a very quick look here. I've started this one yesterday because I woke up in the morning thinking, Oh, I wonder what would happen if I used a coloured background paper. So out came the distress inks and blenders and a stencil. And I coloured what was a white piece of paper into something rather grungy. 
think I went over the top with the brown, but I do like a bit of grunge. And of course, I'm going to add colour, I think, to some of these sections and white to bring them out. And um, for this one, I use this phrase, we all must stand together. I think it originally was, we must all stand together, but I, I must have been channeling Yoda. So we all must stand together. It still makes sense, so it does in my head. And you can see it's quite similar up here. Different patterns though, but a different kind of idea. I wanted to see how it would work if I split the words up like this. Like you'd see in an art journal, I suppose, because I've been talking about art journals, so that's rattling around my head. And I thought, I wonder what it would look like. So I'm working, yeah, I'm working on that one too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you'd think I'd focus, wouldn't you? On one thing at a time. No, because I'm also working on sketches for templates in, in the book books I've been doing and, and whatnot. Okay, what I've got here, let me show you this. This is um, some watercolour card and it's from the Paper Boutique. I found it on um, Amazon. And it says 300 GSM professional grade watercolour card. And when, it, when somebody says card, you think, hmm, this is aimed more at crafters, mixed media artists than professional artists possibly. But it's, it's not, it's not um, cotton rag or anything. It's just, I think it's just cellulose paper, but it is acid free and um, lignin free. And, and it's um, from managed, it's made from woods from managed forests. So I thought, OK, it's reasonably priced. Let's have a look. And it does have two sides to it. This side is rougher than the other side. And I think I would prefer the other side actually for drawing on. But I drew another one of those shells that I did the other day and I've made it all sort of like purple. It looks quite a bit dark. I used graphite for shading and I put a drop shadow around it. I'm not so sure though about that one, but it's fine. So I shall pop that to one side. I don't seem to have an, any other piece of paper, so let's use this. Okay, I'm going to have a look at this. This is Kangula and it's a, it's a slight variation of a pattern um, deconstructed by Thomas Padros, who's a CZT. And I love Thomas's um, tangle patterns, even if I don't quite get them from time to time. Sometimes the deconstructions, I can see how they work, but for some reason, my brain doesn't work that way, my arty brain. Now I am going to use a pencil. <gasps> Please don't tell the Zentangle police. But this is how I make sure that I get things exactly how I want them to be. So I want a grid of four here. And so I'm going to create something that looks like a wind, wind panes of glass in a window. So these areas that I've just drawn there, if I bring this back in, you see these have gaps between them. Now I know you can draw them freehand and put the pencil grid in and what have you, but um, I want to draw them this way because I can. Because I can. As I've said, I hope there's no Zentangle police. Excuse me. That was a sneeze. Sorry. Seems that it's another tree pollen season. <laughs> Something else has started up. Oh gosh. Right, so no end hangle police, so or if there are, don't tell them. So I'm going to draw in the two sides of each box that point towards centre like so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small dot about the same distance in and up here in the corners because we want to draw a square in here but we don't want it I, you know, I'd like them to be more or less the same kind of thing so um, same size and, and so on and look like they carry on beneath 
this grid. So just, oh, I haven't put that other line in there. So just by doing that and using just a, a small dot, I can make that dot disappear. <laughs> Excuse me. In Thomas's original pattern, he actually puts a... another triangle in there and then that is coloured in black. I'm actually going to go to a smaller one because I really don't want to spend hours colouring in black and wrecking what remains of the decency of this nib. Oh hang on, if I go over here that'd be better. I've got a food a pen which I can make it have thicker lines so that I can fill this in. The nice thing about this is that you can adjust the shape of the lines with outside the square if you need to. It's sort of like that doesn't quite match up there. Go here. Do you get this lovely pattern? But I haven't finished this yet because there's one last thing that needs to be done here. <laughs> And that is, I've got to imagine drawing a straight line from one corner to the next, like so. And then let's get the angle right here. It's not too critical if you miss like I just did, because these are going to be coloured in black anyway. So about there and there. And then for this last one, I'm going to go across from there to there. So it sort of like imagine you're drawing the line. I do it sometimes um, with a distance apart. And then these can be coloured in black as well. The only difference from Thomas's original pattern here is that I have um, put double, well, you know, three, three layers of squares in the pattern there because I've drawn such a big version of this. Not quite as big as um, one of the original Zentangle tiles, which are three and a half inches by three and a half inches. This one's got to be about two inches by two inches. But this would make a great monotangle because what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to get a finer pen and this one that's a round here I'm going to use lines fill that in and so it gives that it sort of shades without adding shading with a pencil or something else if you understand me because it will it's the density of the ink. You know, this is about half grey. If you looked at it from a big distance, you, this would read as grey to your eyes because your brain would mix the black and the white. But not as dense, so. So that's cangular, and I'll write it out. Use a thicker pen. Thomas Pedros. I know there's accents over the letters in his name, but I can't remember where they are. So that's quite nice. Okay, let's do a bit of a let's do a bit of an exploration with this. Because I did mine in a slightly different way. And it is a variation he has on his deconstruction and you can find that deconstruction on tanglepatterns.com and I'm sure he has it on his Instagram account as well. I'm not sure where else you can find Thomas on the internet but I know he's there. Right. 
you know, I find it it's absolutely fascinating that I you get to learn the styles of the CZTs and other people who create tangle patterns and do the deconstructions for them. And it's very easy to um, identify Thomas's work. It just screams, oh, that's a Thomas and tangle pattern that is. I mean, one of my most favourite ones is Tiger, which is T-A-I-G-A. -A, and it's absolutely beautiful. I haven't drawn that for a long while. It's one of the ones that it doesn't come easy to me, even with the deconstruction. And because I haven't drawn it for a long while, it will take me quite a while to get it back into the swing of it. But these, this is lovely. The um, variation I did was to split these squares diagonally like this. Hang on, I'm just going to check. Did I do it that way? Yes, of course I did. And then what I'm, go what I'm going to do with this is I am going to add some lines to one side and I am going to put that break with a dot in, which is how I like to draw um, sparkle. And I'm not trying to keep these in line. I want them to be more like the scattered round. And as the line gets smaller, I, I leave the dot out. So I've done, I'm going to do this as a rotational pattern. I didn't quite do that in my, um, my example up there, but there are lots of ways of doing this. So if I rotate this round, this is the top box and I want to do the bottom one. So again, I'm going to add that sparkle. And sometimes for these longer lines, I can get I can get away with putting two dots in the break. So you get a bigger break, a bit more light there, a bit more sparkle. Yeah. So if I turn this again, so I've got this one to do. Ooh, that sparkle was quite high up. That line's got two bits of sparkle in. Because you can, you can do anything you like. This is your work, you make it your own. If your lines aren't as straight as mine, mine are wobbly-ish, very slightly, well, make it a part of it. And really, nobody's going to notice because it's more of a way of adding shadow and highlight here than it is anything else of adding contrast I should say to the design you could go full hog and fill this triangle in completely in black if you wanted to there we are it looks a bit like a windmill now I could go back and add some lines that go this way so that would give a different texture you know different pattern there um but you could fill this area in with something else so let me draw quickly another one of these so i'm going to put double lines in rather than doing the central line i've worked that out i can be very dim about things at times it can take me a while to go oh yeah of course i can do that honestly I sometimes wonder at myself. Okay, let's do this then. And let's have a look at variations on what we could fill a side with. So again, I'm going to pop these in. We could have popped them in this way. Perhaps I'll quickly draw my squarish tile in. It is squarish. Again, I'm not worried about perfection with this. This will end up in my sketchbook, so 
No great worries there. All right, let's have a look. See, I've said I'm going to work on variations here and my brain is already ticking over what a variation could look like. I just hope I remember the ones that I'm ticking, are ticking over in my head, what I'd like to do. So for this one, I'm going to split these this way. And perhaps we could... How could I... Oh. For this one, I'm going to pop squares in like that. See, I've already got to this one. And perhaps I'll make this one all black as well. Pick a pen. And Angela, remember to put your pens to the right-hand side of you rather than at the top. Saves me reaching across this. So that's quite nice. That's very graphic. And it does look like we've got a little pocket there, especially when I go back and do this. Who's to say that we have to fill this in completely in black? Just put a little triangle at the bottom to half fill that space for a bit of variation. I'm not sure I like that actually, so perhaps I'll leave two sides that way, two sides not. Let's come back to this one. That's better. These aren't perfect. Partly it's to do with the roughness of the paper, but it's also partly to do with me trying to rush doing these uninspiring bits of adding black. So this, these two, um, that's where the other one is. There we go. These two is where I'm going to do some variations like this. That's quite interesting. I'm not quite. I'm trying to envisage what it would look like if I use this as the building block of a grid. If this was one cell of a grid, and I can't at the moment, but I do think it would be interesting. Okay, so with these, I have the lines going um, parallel. What about if we have them at? 90 degrees instead. Again, just adding that little bit of sparkle. And I will. I didn't add a gap in the middle of the centre one. If you miss a line and you haven't left a gap or a dot and a gap or however you want to do this. Don't worry about it because in, in the whole section it will just sort itself out. So that's another one. That's quite nice when they're side by side like that. It's a bit like this. We're reflecting this in a, in a way. It's a reflection rather than a rotation. Okay, what else did I want to do? I actually thought that it would be quite nice to pop them like this. And perhaps, oops, wobbly line, another one of these. Hopefully not quite so much of a wobbly line on this one. So I'm weaving these shapes, oops, um, like so. And I'm going to fill that little triangle in that we get to down there. So it's kind of, I think it's a bit like Rush, that one, Zentangle Pattern Rush. And um, the other thing I suppose we can do, do I want to draw a shape in there or shall I, I'll just fill this with a different filler pattern. So I'm going to use my circles I like, not very well drawn today. This is rougher paper so it's 
not so easy to draw things smoothly. I'm trying to keep fairly large circles in towards the this and then get the circles to go smaller and smaller as I get towards the corner, this corner over here, so that I get that gradient of density of ink. So hopefully it'll give that, it'll give the idea that this may be um, sticking up, which is possible. Shadowing will really help with that. So what about these ones? Oh, look at that, I missed completely there, didn't I? I, have, I am such a mare today. Okay, perhaps it's these ones. That need the... And I will just fill that smallest triangle in there. So instead of having this this way, it's that way. Now that does look like it's a little envelope opening in a, a weird kind of envelope. Okay, let's have a look here. What about if we do this on one side? So I've got the lines radiating from the points. That actually would work quite nicely. It would work quite nice. Would it? It would work in these as well, wouldn't it? it? Would. And this last one. I think I am going to fill these in completely. Though they don't look wonderful like this. That's better. I'm trying to work out how could I fit. I think I might put a frilly edge here, frilly, like so, and then perhaps have this shadowed, like so. I'm just sort of like, almost like laughing inwardly at myself because I realised that I came here today going to, going to come carry on with the Embrace Chaos and I've ended up doing some tangulations, some pattern tangulations. Such a lovely, lovely pattern this. So let me just draw a square and let's just do one. Of these and I am going to draw the square in like this. If you're not sure about draw how to draw that square in or you're not sure about getting it exactly how you want it, draw the diagonal line in from corner to corner and then just pick a point along there, draw the line vertically down and then horizontally across. And you'll always get a nice square. Just a bit more of that kind of deconstruction going on. Now in these, normally we draw these as if they are directly across. And I do like that because it, it gives you that feeling of, of the same kind of triangular shape behind. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase, oh, increase the angle, decrease the angle. Make that as... A sharper kind of triangle like this. Let me just pop that in. I'm going to do this and then the bottom side I'm going to fill with lines. Like so. So that works quite nicely. This one, I think I will. Should I do the same? Let's yeah, let's try the same. Pop that like that. And let me try this 
kind of lines that radiate from that the, the point of the triangle the apex if you will so two different ways there most of these are just with very simple lines that circle there is the only exception and the the humps but it's half a circle so it counts as half a circle so how do you think how are we doing here i think we're doing okay aren't we think so. I'm looking at this and thinking, are there any other variations? The answer is I'm not too sure. I think I've come to my time. There is a triangular version of this. Now, I did do a video on this a while back, but if I find it, or if I can find it, I'll put a link in. But it is, it's a lovely pattern as well. But it's based on a triangle. And again, unlike here, we don't take the square up to the top. But this one, we do have a vertical line here. And then we decide where we want this triangle. And I'm going to make my triangle this size. If you've got another triangle, another one of these ca um, triangular cangulars here, then you know, if I join these together, you can see what I'm doing. So I want some lines that go from here to here. And then if I go over here, I can work that out. So we're getting this lovely pattern. And then I'm going to draw these down to about the center just a little bit less than the centre of the line. Fill them with black. And we've got our triangular cangular. Let's just like so. I will, because I do like these double borders. You may have noticed that. Yeah, let me get the thicker pen. And there we have Kangula. It's been a while since I've done a deconstruction of a, ta of a tangle pattern and looked at variations. But I do like that. Now this is really quite graphic and it really does show these lines up there very nicely. So let me just pop these to one side. You get a tortillon and a pencil. I will use a pencil for this. You know it's not my favourite. But let's have a look. How, how can we get these to appear dimensional? I can't remember how Thomas does it. Tom Thomas. I think we'd pop some shadow along here and here. Here and here. This is a, a pit graphite matte pencil. It's a 2B. I've got a tortillon here. So I can just use that to tease that graphite out, smooth it in and tease it out, work it into the paper. Just give some shadow there. And then that will look like these, this, this um, negative space between each cangulo will look like it's above them. And yet it's just space. There's no end to these bars as it appears. And they do appear like bars, but they're not. There is nothing there. So, there's that one. Okay, this one. I'm going to put some shadow right along the edges of these. And in the tip 
of these um, shaded areas. So this is going to be a pattern rather than a light source of shadow. So I'm looking at these. I'm going to see if we can get them to appear a little bit folded, perhaps, or um, curved. I don't want to take the shadow too far towards the sparkly bits. But if it gets there and I don't want it, that's the magic of an eraser. So I think that actually works quite nicely. I also think I might just pop some along here. Perhaps just to suggest there's a hint of um, shadow underneath this to help to lift it. I'm putting the shadow mostly where the highlight would be. Interesting because this, this pencil doesn't want to blend out as nicely on this paper as it does on the smoother paper. So where's my erasers? They're around here somewhere. Over here. I put stuff out the way. So let me just have a look here. I mean, whatever eraser you have will work for this. I'm also going to... Perhaps I should have done that to these before I started adding. Much in because perhaps that doesn't help when it comes to adding stuff. I'm not going to take it all away. I do want to leave some of that, those pencil lines, the guidelines in. So I've got though them as a reference when I come back to draw this again or to look at this again. So that's quite nice. I think I could do with getting rid of some of this yeah, I do want it that little bit brighter, especially towards the top, I think. There's that. Okay, and this one, I think I want to make for this a shadow right underneath this line as if this is folded above it. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And sometimes I can't see the illusions myself. It's funny, when you work on this, um, work on things closely, you sometimes just can't see what you've created in terms of dimensionality. I've told this story before and I must probably tell it again, but there may be people who haven't watched the video where I told it. So when I was doing my A-level art, I did some oil paintings based on patterns from Romanesque um, architecture and from rusty gears or screws or something from locomotives. And um, I, they created abstract patterns. I abstracted parts of them and then used colour to represent feelings or, you know, representation of them. I hate oil paints, by the way. I hate them. They are slimy. They are easy. If you try to move them, you can mess things up and they smell. And, and the thinners and the stuff you have to use to clean them up. Oh, just don't. I like the effect of them because the colours are so vibrant. But oh no, and I don't like acrylic paints for the same reason, which is why I don't use paints. They're just slimy. Um, so came to the... Um, art exhibition, the, the end of course exhibition, once all the work had been marked before the results were out. And so my, my um, mine were hung on a board near the door coming in. And I had some clay sculptures I'd done as well, sort of clay tiles that were very sculptural and very tactile that I'd created, fired and I'd coloured them with um, oil pastels and white spirit to use colour. And it makes a very subtle colour on the fired clay. And then you seal it with varnish. It's lovely. That all of these things are hanging in my home. And um, people were going up and touching the tiles, which I expected. But they were also touching my paintings. And I, I didn't understand why. 
they were touching them. So a friend came up to speak to me and we were talking. I said, can you tell me something? She said, what? I said, why did you touch my oil paintings? She said, I thought they were, they were three-dimensional sculptures. And she said, they look so three-dimensional, it's hard to believe that they're actually painted flat. So sometimes I can't see what I've done with pencil until I've had a good long break or, you know, go and look at something. Um, even holding it up at arm's length doesn't work because I just see where I've added the graphite. I don't always see the, the illusion. Looking on my screen away from me, yeah, I can see that looks like it dips down and this is completely flat. So perhaps I will, I'll do it with this one. Let's just see what happens if I've put some shadow at the bottom and around the edges of this one. Just a bit just to have that sinking away as if that's curved let's have a look just make the top of it nice and white just clean that top bit up it looks a bit grubby now but does that work does that help possibly so that i can't see that this illusion i'm trying to create very well remember if you want something to look further away you add shadow if you want it to curve in a certain way you make the shape of that shadow curved so perhaps that would help a little bit a bit curvy curvature going on there perhaps does that help yeah it does look more dimensional compared to that one i haven't cracked it though well this one is the same thing we're going to pop some shadow right underneath there It's about working the graphite into the paper and then just spreading a tiny bit further out so you get that shadow. I'm going to do the same with this one, but I'm going to make the shadow broader to the sides. I don't know if you can see, but I've got quite a, quite a, um, a sweep, a swoop there. Because I want this to appear conical, so I need to have that shadow shaped as if this is this is a cone sticking out again i can use this eraser of mine just to clean some of that section up a little bit where it's you know this is quite a broad one of these it needs poking out okay this one i am going to pop some shadow underneath this because that will make this look like we've got it sticking up above the paper it's a drop shadow really we're looking for here so I can do that so that works nicely Again, just clean that up and then I am going to pop shadows here along here and I can go over the black with these pencils because they because they're matte they don't show up as particularly shiny on top of the, the pen. So that's okay. And perhaps just a hint of shadow just in the corner of the edge there as if it's folding over or bending down a little perhaps. That works quite well, doesn't it? Possibly. This is a strange one. But I think I'm going to treat it like this, this one kind of where I'm going to put shadow underneath here as if this is sort of going into a weird envelope or it's the flap opened of a weird kind of envelope, perhaps. Like so, just some shadow there and perhaps some at the base. Just taking some off this tortillon. I can actually do that in all of them just to give that little hint of shadow going on there. There we go. And uh, I can also, I'm going to pop a drop shadow underneath this side. That helps to lift that up somewhat as well. And we can also put a drop shadow under here. This is where I am paying attention to um, light source. If 
for that drop shadow around the outside of these. There wouldn't be one here, but we could just put a hint of one in. Because the light's coming this way, it'd hit under there. So that works. Um, these are pretty much the same. I can see what I haven't done on this one. So just to finish these, I'm going to leave these as they are. I'm not going to add any shadow to them. Um, and instead, perhaps, of having a straight triangle, how about curving that there? Just as something a little bit different. Does that work? It's just trying what would work for you, what you like. Um, how you'd like things to be. So there's some variations of Kangula there. And I do like a bit of Kangula. So I'm going, I'm going to leave this here today. I um, could add some colour. I said I was going to leave it here. But I've still got some of the Karen paint pens on my palette. So it'd be a shame not to use some of them, wouldn't it? Possibly. Okay, let's see how I can destroy these. So I've got some, I've got a water brush here. I haven't got any tissue though. I'm not going to get up and get it. So I've got, oh, I've got this lovely turquoise here. So let's have a look at this and add some turquoise to this. The nice thing about this, if it's if it will work like watercolour card, then I'm going to be able to shift this colour around and add more colour. It does dry quite quickly, but that's to be expected with watercolour paper generally. It depends how much water you put on it, and I've put not much. And it is quite warm in here today, my room. It's quite warm out. Okay, let's add some more on the other side so I'm going to add it quite dark at the bottom and hopefully fade it out towards the top again use some water just to lift it up and to spread it away from that center pick what little color there is left just to add right along that edge and I think I may just pop I've got a blue here that's quite intense that's a bit better, so let's add a bit more on this side. And then... Let's just allow that to feather out a little bit, spread out the edge. So there, we've got that. I don't know if that helps in any way, but it's a way of adding shadow. Um, I'm tempted to leave what's here as it is, although I could use a paler colour. So I've got this kind of fiery, orangey, pinky, reddy colour. So again, I'm going to just put some water in the middle just to... Create that shadow, or that highlight rather, and then I can go back and add some darker colour where the shadows lie. Keep that shadow in there. It's quite nice because it's a complementary colour. I've got different red here, let's try this one. Because I'm, I'm always up for trying things. You know? well, I say as you know, you may not, you may be new here. But let's have a look and see. Again, I'm going to get some red and, I'm, and red water. And I'm just going to pop the water where I want the highlights. And I'm just going to let it do its own watercolory kind of thing. Because, you know, why not? use of watercolours. I'm not so sure about adding colour. I think I prefer, much prefer it just black and white but then I have been working with black and white. So so there we are. So a bit of colour there on top of the um, graphite. Um, it does work quite nicely. 
you get um, a kind of metallic feel to the colour with the graphite, I think so anyway. So there we go, that's my little exploration for the day. So I hope you found that interesting. Again, if you want to look at the de deconstruction, um, if you have a look on tanglepatterns.com, then that very much you would find it there, or Thomas um, Padras's Instagram, he is there as Thomas Padros. I'm not sure if he's got CZT after it, but you'd find him. And um, all I'm going to say is enjoy, have fun. And if you're still drawing houses, this could make an interesting pattern to fill the, um, the base of the house with, you know, the, the actual structure of the house, not the roof, but the house bit. Do you know what I mean? I don't want the floors. Well, what do you call it? You've got a roof on top of it. So the house, the main part of the house. Um, it could be an interesting pattern to use there. It could be on roofs as well. It could be an interesting one there. Um, but draw your house big. <laughs> so you've got plenty of space to put the grid in. Draw it big. Right. Take care of yourselves. Thank you for sharing, for being here. Thank you for sharing. If you've shared my videos or mentioned them, thank you so much if you've left a comment. And I'm ever so grateful to each and every one of you who's given a thumbs up for the video and for subscribing. So take care for now. Bye bye.